Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer still remains as one of my all-time favorite holiday specials to watch, as well as my most popular topic to cover on this channel. I always had a huge soft spot for Rankin Bass Productions. Not only were they decently animated for the time, but they also had a good story to go with them. And while I personally think they kind of lost their charm by the late 70s, their earlier specials like Santa Claus is Coming to Town, The Little Drummer Boy, The Year Without Santa Claus, and Here Comes Peter Cottontail still remain as true animated classics to this very day. Rudolph was not only the first Christmas special they worked on, but it was also the special that got them on the map. Without Rudolph, we probably wouldn't have all those other Rankin and Bass stop motion specials, or even the stop motion films and specials that we see today. But what a lot of people probably don't know about is that Rankin and Bass's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer has a bunch of sequels, and even though Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Island of Misfit Toys wasn't produced by them since they went defunct in 1987, I still see that film as the best sequel to the original special. I used to have a recording of this film back when it aired on ABC Family, and this was one of those films that I would watch every Christmas. However, since it aired on TV, some scenes and musical numbers were shortened, likely for commercial time. Before Island of Misfit Toys, there were two Rudolph sequels that were actually produced by Rankin and Bass. The first one was Rudolph's Shiny New Year from 1976. It pretty much abandons every character from the original special, except for Rudolph and Santa, and replaced them with new characters that I never really cared about. I feel like this special was the point when Rankin and Bass started to decline in quality. I felt like a lot of the Christmas specials produced after 1976 were either just not as entertaining or just straight up boring. I'm looking at you, Jack Frost. The other sequel was Rudolph and Frosty Christmas in July from 1979. It's been years since I've seen this film but I kind of remembered liking it. I liked how there were many callbacks to the original special, such as Clarice making a cameo, and Rudolph and Frosty singing were a couple of misfits. While some of the old characters were still missing, it was definitely the better of the two sequels. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Island of Misfit Toys was released on video and DVD on October 30th, 2001. It was produced by Golden Books Family Entertainment, who owned Rankin and Bass's pre-1974 library at the time, as well as Tundra Productions. In the US, the film was distributed by Good Times Entertainment, those same companies also produced a Rudolph film a few years earlier, called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Movie. Despite Misfit Toys taking place in the 1964 specials as continuity, it does share some things in common with the 1998 movie. For example, the voice actor for Rudolph is the same in both films. More on the voice actors later. I don't recall ever seeing this 1998 movie, though I do remember Mima having a VHS copy of this film, but in reality, it was just a cover. The actual tape was just the original 1964 special. Maybe next year I'll get around to covering it. From the footage I've seen, it actually doesn't look too bad. Oddly enough, around the time Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Island of Misfit Toys was released, Playing Mantis released a Rudolph toy line with a similar name, called Rudolph and the Island of Misfit Toys. I'm not sure if these toys were made to coincide with this movie, but I do think it's unlikely since the figures are based off of their designs from the original special. I do happen to own most of the action figures from Wave 1, and I must say, they're fantastic. As for the movie itself, it has never been re-released on home video, and it didn't even get a Blu-ray release. However, there is a DVD release of the movie in the Netherlands that's actually in its original 16x9 aspect ratio. All the other releases of the film out there are all in 4x3, so the footage I'll be showing in this video will be in its 16x9 ratio, which was thankfully archived online. Anyways, enough chit-chatting, let's get on with the movie and see if it still holds up. The movie starts with the introduction of the mysterious toy taker. After that, we meet the narrator of this movie, Scoop T Snowman. Almost forgot to introduce myself. Name's Scoop T Snowman, ace reporter for the Christmas Town Chronicle, the North Pole's best-selling newspaper. North Pole's only newspaper. <laughs> yes, sir. I've got a nose for news. Ain't it a beaut? Big hit at barbecues, too. Of course, around here, no nose compares to Rudolph's. I always wondered why they didn't just bring back Sam the Snowman instead of pulling a pack mom on us and replacing him with a new character. But since Burl Ives passed away in 1995, I guess having someone else voicing Sam would have been seen as disrespectful to the character since he was pretty much a caricature of Burl Ives himself, even donning his iconic beard, girth, and voice. Besides, I've seen other people voice Sam in parodies and other future appearances, and they do a very poor job trying to sound like Ives. Hey, why does Jerry Stiller get through? I'm the narrator from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Well, I don't see you narrating. My left nut's more famous than Jerry Stiller. I'm Sam the Snowman. Nice to meet you. What? Haven't you heard of a talking snowman before? Well, now, 
You got here just in time. But thanks to the brave Late Show staff, the show went on the air as scheduled, so all the good boys and good girls could stay up late and watch the... Oh no, the shock truck! No! Ah! It burns! It burns! My blood is on your hands, CBS! Overall, Scoop is just an alright addition, and does a fine job narrating the film. Now before I show any more footage, I must let everyone know about a certain part of the original 1964 special. When we were introduced to Yukon Cornelius, he claimed to be searching for minerals like silver and gold. How does he do it? By throwing his pickaxe in the air and licking it. However, there was a scene in the original special that ended his arc, but was cut in future reruns for a very long time. The only way to watch this scene today is if you own any of the post-1998 home video releases of the special, or watch the reruns of the special on Freeform. But in the scene where Santa and the reindeers leave to go to the Island of Misfit Toys, there was a part that featured Cornelius as he threw his pickaxe one last time. But when he takes a lick of it, he starts to remember the thing that he was actually looking for the whole time. Peppermint. Peppermint! What I've been searching for all my life! I've struck it rich! I've got me a peppermint mine! Wahoo! They actually address the original scene as we see Yukon coming out of the peppermint mine, which he mentioned in the original. I've struck it rich! I've got me a peppermint mine! This was a really nice touch that most people would likely ignore upon first viewing, as well as being a nice reference to that original scene. After the opening credits, the characters all have a fun holiday party with food, music, dancing, etc. And while the CG animation looks like complete garbage, I'll have to give the animators credit for giving Bumble a lot of fur. For 2001 standards, it probably was extremely difficult to make hairlines at the time. And while it's not perfect, at least they tried. I mean, considering that almost every puppet from the original special was pretty much gone by that point, it probably was a good idea to use CG animation for this movie, even if it kinda sucks. How about let's go over the voice actors too. Even if the CGI looks poor, the voice acting is pretty good. I don't know most of these actors, but there are some notable actors I felt like mentioning. Such as Rudolph being voiced by Kathleen Barr. Not only did she previously voice Rudolph in the 1998 movie, but she is known best for voicing Kevin from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. She also voices Mrs. Claus as well. As for Hermie and Yukon Cornelius, they're both voiced by Scott McNeil. He's done a lot of voice work, but I know him best as the voice of Dr. Wily in both the English dub for the Mega Man OVA and the Ruby Spears Mega Man series. Out of all the actors in this film, I'd say Scott did the best performance. Both Bumble and Santa are voiced by Gary Chalk. Like Scott, Gary has done a lot of voice work over the years. But I know him best as the voice of Gutsman and a few other Robot Masters from the Ruby Spears Mega Man series, Grounder from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and Dr. Robotnik from Sonic Underground. Also, the new character, the Toy Taker, well, he's voiced by Rick Moranis, aka Dark Helmet from Spaceballs, Barney Rubble from the live action Flintstones movie, and Louis Tully from the Ghostbusters franchise. Almost every voice actor in this film sounds pretty much like the original voices from the 1964 special, which I think is a good thing considering that this is a follow up to the original special. At some point in the film, Rudolph and Clarice go outside and frolic around while some cheesy song plays in the background. If we could fly away, together we'll fly someday, and be who we are, somewhere beyond the stars, if we made a wish, in my about 11 minutes into the film is where we truly progress into the story. We see this kite wandering around the North Pole looking for Hermie the Elf, who is now a licensed dentist. This kite came from the island of Misfit Toys, and the reason why he's looking for Hermie is because King Moonraiser has a toothache. There's also a little side plot where Rudolph is tired of all the fame and fortune he always gets, and insists on wanting a normal nose so he could have a normal life. Gee, guys. Thanks. Being famous is swell and all, but the truth is, I never did anything to deserve it. And he's modest, too. All I ever wanted was... Blow your nose, Rudolph. To be like everybody else. Come on, champ! Let's see the trick with the disco ball. Right, right! Disco ball! 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 Disco 
I'm just a novelty act around here. Now, in the original 1964 special, Rudolph is pretty much an adult at the end of the special, but this movie contradicts this as he closely resembles his younger self in most of the original special. I don't really like that they did this, but then again, Shiny New Year and Christmas in July did this as well, so I could kind of give this retcon some sort of pass. Also not to mention that he is much bigger than Hermie in this film compared to how he was in the original. So maybe Rudolph is still an adult in the sequel, he just probably shed his antlers. King Moon Racer's got a royal toothache. Can you come to the Island of Misfit Toys? You bet. Need an assistant, Hermie? What a pal. So Rudolph tags along with Hermie and the kite as they go on their way to the Island of Misfit Toys in Hermie's toothmobile. You're scary. Sorry. I was just trying to figure out why I'm a misfit toy. The awful truth? I'm afraid of heights. Ain't it tragic? Actually, Rudolph and I used to be misfits too. Yeah, yanking my tail. Except I'm still a misfit. But you're a celebrity. So what? I'd give anything for a normal nose. Poor guy. How tragic. Rudolph isn't in the best mood, so Hermie tries to cheer him up by going into, you guessed it, a musical number. Golly, but I just don't fit. Hey, don't even think of it. Not even for a little bit? The situation's delicate. We'll find a fit. You're such a witch. And you're a major benefit. Oh! Me? So keep your chin up, keep your shoulders back, and face, face the, the world with pride. So what if we're both kind of loony? So what if we're both kind of toony? So what if we're both kind of spoony? Spoony, toony, loony. We're just fine. They eventually arrive at the island of Misfit Toys, where we're treated to another musical number. Already? We already finished the first one about a minute ago. Did we really need another one this soon? On the island of Misfit Toys. Oh, the island of misfit toys. 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 Oh, toys, 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 toys,
Hmm. You realize a nose job is permanent. Your nose won't ever glow again. I've waited my whole life for this chance, Hermie. But what if it's another foggy Christmas Eve? Santa can't afford headlights, darling? What if Clarice doesn't like the new nose? Uh, maybe I need some time to think it over. Take all the time you want, Sugar Plum. Rudolph promised to tell Santa all about Castaway Cove. And by morning, Queen Camilla's staff repaired the Toothmobile better than new. But on the journey back to Christmastown, Rudolph had his mind set on how a new, less shiny nose might change his life for the better. Back in Christmastown, Rudolph teaches Clarice how to fly while still thinking about whether or not he should change his nose. I won't be so famous after I get my nose fixed, then I'll be normal like everyone else. But Rudolph... And I'll finally fit in, and, and, and we can be happy and... I love your nose, and everything about you. You do? This scene is a nice nod to the original 1964 special, where Clarice's affection towards Rudolph helps his ability to fly, but in this sequel, it's the other way around. Would you walk up with me? Uh-huh. Rudolph? I think you're cute. I'm cute! I'm cute! Magnificent! I'm cute! I'm cute! She said I'm cute! Not bad at all! <laughs> Tell me anyway. Well... Really? He loves me! He loves me! Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer loves me! You better come to the castle, you two. Something wrong, Coach Comet? Wrong? I'll say. Santa's warehouse was robbed. Unfortunately, Santa announces that his toys were stolen by the toy taker, but... Rudolph's got a plan, right? Right. What's the plan, champ? Well, um, what if we catch the toy taker and get the toys back by Christmas? But by golly, how does one catch such a slippery scoundrel? Well, you got me. Also, the movie reveals that the tall elf's actual name is Hank. I think it fits. He sure does look like a Hank after all. What did you see, Hank? Dear God, how am I supposed to read this? I was up late reading last night, and I saw, well, it looked like a giant flying football. I thought I was just seeing things. I think Hank saw a blimp. Great! Bouncing icebergs! That's how he absconded with our toys! So the crew go inside the toy warehouse to investigate, while Hermie reunites with his former boss, Foreman Elf. You again! Actually, I'm a dentist now. Dentist Mentris! You no account rebel! You left my staff one elf short! You'd better be nice. One of these days, you'll need a dentist, and I'm the only one around. I wouldn't let you touch my choppers with a ten-foot pole, you, you tooth maniac! It's odd the way that the Foreman Elf acts in this scene, considering how the original special ended with Hermie scheduling him an appointment. Maybe the Foreman Elf forgot about his appointment and decided not to trust Hermie. Anyways, Clarice finds a piece of plush stuffing, while Rudolph finds some peculiar footprints. <laughs> Sand? There's not a peck of pepper or morsel of mint left in that stinky old peppermint mine. Me and Bumble mind it clean. 
How about helping us catch the toy taker? There won't be any toys for Christmas unless we find him. Well, what are we waiting for? Wahoo! <laughs> 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 So Rudolph, Clarice, Hermie, Yukon, and Bumble decide to go to Castaway Cove and the Island of Misfit Toys, since they were the only two locations that the Toy Taker didn't visit. Meanwhile, we see the Toy Taker in his hideout with some familiar faces. Hold on one cotton picking minute. I used to live on the island of Misfit Toys until Santa found me a home of my own. That was the happiest day of my life. Take me back. My little Sarah needs me. Please, Mr. Toy Taker, let me go home too. A toy is never truly happy until it is loved by a child. Yeah, the truth is that children always outgrow you. And when they stop needing you, have mercy. They'll toss you aside like yesterday's trash. <laughs> Not my little girl. Charlie in the box. Think of how lonely life must be when a child stops needing you. But I'll always take care. Wait a minute! I read about you in the papers! You're not our friend! You're a crook! The toy taker goes through a musical number, pretty much singing, Hey, I'm not the bad guy, I'm trying to save you. I'm a really peaceful fellow. At heart I'm soft as cello. My modus operandi. Is influenced by Gumdai. So cheer! Cause the Toy Taker's here. You'll never be discarded or get thrown away. I swear, what I'm saying is true. The Toy Taker, it's me, will take care of you. What's weird about this scene is that we never see these particular toys ever again for the rest of the film's runtime. It gives off the impression that they were forgotten and stuck in this mountain for all eternity. Though I like to think that they were eventually taken back to the original owners at some point during the film's ending, just off screen. So Rudolph and the gang go to Castaway Cove to warn Queen Camilla about the Toy Taker, but it was too late. The Toy Taker already came. So they go to the Island of Misfit Toys to warn King Moonraiser. The Toy Taker plans to strike here next, your majesty. But this time, we'll be waiting for him. And we'll give that horrible hooligan what fur? No, Cornelius. We won't even try to stop him. Rudolph has a plan, don't you, Rudolph? The gang disguised themselves as toys so they could go inside the Toy Taker's blimp. Don't worry, Mr. Kite. We're here to rescue you. And Rudolph! Not so loud! his toys back. Surrender ya, hooligan! We got you surrounded! After a few missteps, they hijack the blimp, the toy taker escapes, Rudolph and Clarice follows him, and Bumble stops the blimp. <laughs> As for Rudolph and Clarice, they follow the toy taker into the now abandoned peppermint mine, where they ride on the mine trains Donkey Kong Country style. <laughs> you like roller coasters? Love
The Toy Taker eventually gets away. However, Yukon Cornelius and the rest of the gang show up to help. If only I had me some rope! Will dental floss do? It just might, dentist. Waxed or unwaxed? Mm. Waxed? Mint or cherry? Oh, just give me that! Hop on, Yukon! Time for some reindeer rodeo! Thanks to Yukon and Hermes Dental Floss, they finally caught the Toy Taker. <laughs> well done, all of you! Do you have any idea how much trouble you caused? Let's see who he really is! <gasps> well, the toy taker is revealed to be the teddy bear on stilts. Won't anyone fear me? Please? No. Ooh, ooh. Look, he's hurt. Huh? Oh. You've lost a lot of stuffing, son. I'm a very old teddy bear, Santa. And my seams just aren't holding up the way they used to. So the stuffing in the warehouse was yours. And the peculiar footprints were from the stilts. But why would a teddy bear steal toys? Not steal, Rudolph. Rescue. You see, my real name is Mr. Cuddles. My story begins a long, long time ago. Mr. Cuddles reveals his backstory via a musical number and explains his true intentions. Considering that this movie came out two years after Toy Story 2, it's very obvious that Mr. Cuddles' backstory is a complete and utter ripoff of Jesse's backstory in Toy Story 2, even to the point where they're both explained via an emotional song. I know they did that so we could sympathize with Mr. Cuddles, but the song itself is trying way too hard to be emotional. I stayed for years in a cardboard box Till one day the garbage man came They threw me out Yes, they threw me out Without any reason or rhyme I was ashamed And so I became the toy taker To spare other toys from the eternal darkness of cardboard boxes And the harrowing indignity of the trash heap <laughs> Oh, poor darling. <laughs> Mr. Cuddles, while it's true that many children outgrow their toys, I happen to know that your boy's been looking for you. He has? Really? I'll gladly take you home to him. And I bet Queen Camilla can mend those seams. Good idea, Hermie. Also, Cornelius finds silver and gold for some reason. Silver and gold? Gold and silver? Why, there's silver and gold in our peppermint mine! <laughs> <laughs> So the gang goes back to Castaway Cove to have the Queen restore Mr. Cuddles so Santa could send him back to his original owner. But what about Rudolph? Throughout the first act, he's been tired of the fame that he gets and insists on wanting a normal nose. But does he still want to change it? Well, after he starts remembering how useful his nose truly is, he decides not to change it. I think... maybe... I'll just stick with the nose I have. I don't always like it, but... Well, I guess we kind of, sort of... Go together? Are you mad? I wouldn't change a thing about you, Rudy, darling. You're pretty fabulous, just the way you are. 
Well, maybe Rudolph realized that everything he ever wanted was right under his nose the whole time. And when Mr. Cuddles returned all the toys and the elves packed Santa's sleigh, everyone knew deep in their hearts it was going to be the best Christmas ever. So after watching Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Island of Misfit Toys again, how does the sequel hold up? Even without my nostalgia goggles on, Island of Misfit Toys stands out as a pretty solid film. This film actually feels more like a true sequel to the original special compared to the sequels that Rankin and Bass produced. Not only does this film have plenty of the characters from the original special, but the voice acting is also pretty good and the voices do the characters justice, especially Scott McNeil's performance as Hermie and Yukon, which is spot on. The story itself is also not too bad, saving Christmas from a toy bandit. Yeah, okay, maybe the story was a little weak, but at least the writing was decent enough to make up for it. And while some of the songs were annoying to listen to, there are a few great ones in this film, such as Keep Your Chin Up, Beautiful Like Me, and The Toy Taker. However, even by 2001 standards, the CG animation has not aged well. I get that this was a direct-to-video movie made on a smaller budget, but they could have at least made it look less plasticky. But despite me saying that the animation is garbage, it actually does start to grow on you the more you watch it. And the character and background models themselves are pretty passable, though I wish some of the characters were a bit more expressive. Compared to the other character models, I'd say Hermie is the best looking one in this film. Also, despite the unfinished looking animation, there are some details that I wouldn't expect them to be in a film like this, such as the snow prints on Scoop and the reindeers, and even things like Bumbles' hairlines and Yukon's beard look pretty impressive compared to everything else in the film, graphically speaking. Maybe if the film was given a bigger budget, we probably would have gotten a much nicer looking film. Though imagine if this film was done in stop motion. Considering how almost every character from the original special has an action figure from the confusingly named Rudolph and the Island of the Misfit Toys toy line, it could be possible to reanimate the whole film using these toys. In fact, maybe if I had the right equipment and maybe the money to buy all those expensive action figures, I probably could pull off something like that. Regardless, I'm glad this film stuck with the CGI style since in theory it was probably a good alternative to the originals of stop motion imagery. As for the characters, I really like them in this film, even if some of the characters do feel a little one-dimensional. I'd say my favorite character in this film would probably be Hermie. He's as great of a friend to Rudolph like he was in the original, and he's overall just a really charming and most likable guy. Remember, don't ever feel crummy, cause I am your personal chummy. I also really like the mysterious look and feel of the toy taker, and the reveal of him being a teddy bear was an interesting plot twist. I also think the viewers who thought that the characters were jerks in the original special, they'll probably like them better in the sequel. So overall, I think Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Island of Misfit Toys is a worthy successor to the original 1964 special. And even though this film might be something that kids would more likely enjoy, I still think it has enough merits to be somewhat of an underrated classic. Despite not being produced by anyone from Rankin and Bass, this sequel does a great job staying true to the source material, which is something that the Frosty sequels wish to be. I'm Lane Wilkinson, and have a happy holiday. <laughs> Steven never meant to throw you away. He was saving you as a family heirloom. He's all grown up now with a child of his own. This is the happiest day of my life. Enough with the gloating! Open wide now. This won't hurt a bit.